Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now I've previously been to London and we've had a walking tour of German Street, but today I thought we'd come back and try out the mother of all sartorial locations. Of course, it is Savile Row, right in the heart of central London. And of course, this has been the home to men's tailoring for many, many years, way hundreds of years back, when a number of the, the, the houses, the tailoring houses that we'll see in a moment, decided to make this street their home. And as a consequence, Savile Row has been renowned the world over uh, as a location that men come to to get the finest clothing, suits particularly, within the world. So I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to have a walking tour of just some of the stores in this street. Now, of course, this is a, a working, busy London street, so I apologise for any uh, shaky camera work or audio interruptions, but it is what it is. Let's go and have a look. OK, folks, so the building we see here is of course, as you can see, number one Savile Row, and it's Geeves and Hawks. Now Geeves and Hawks, okay, you can see the see exactly where we are. Geeves and Hawks is one of the oldest tailoring houses in the country. It's been around since 1771, and as you can see, it's by royal appointment to um, the Queen, the former Duke of Edinburgh, now deceased and His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Gives and Hawks is a tailoring house which very much is in the old traditional school. You can see they proudly display their Union flag and their clothing style is very much inspired by the military. They are one of the tailors which still to this day provides, um, sorry, distracted by the incredibly well-dressed individuals you see on this street. Um, they provide, still provide military uniforms. So they tailor the uniforms of the best officers in the military. Uh, very expensive, of course, as all of the houses are here. But Geeves and Hawks in a bit of a perilous situation at the moment because it is currently owned by a Hong Kong um, holding company, which has gone into financial difficulty. And there's every chance that Geeves and Hawks actually may disappear if that company goes bust nobody really knows. They've got a number of different premises, uh, you know, sub-premises uh, around the country. There's one near where I live in Bath, but um, yeah, there she is, Geeves and Hawks, one of the more famous names on the street. So let's wander down the street and talk about where we are, Savile Row. So when we talk about Savile Row, obviously most of us think of suits. Savile Row suits, and this is it. This is the epicenter of where it all starts from. Now to be a Savile Row suit, the garment has to be made within 100 meters of this location, the most famous tailoring street in the world. And actually, you see Abercrombie and Fitch there, many fashion houses have started to appear on the row, taking advantage of the famous name to sort of leverage the reputations of their organizations, their companies, their, their fashion houses. It's a working street, it's not just all tailors. There are many other businesses, companies, and other things which are here. But as you walk along, you know, you'll be fascinated to see the amazing cars which are parked at the side of the road and things like this. The Cad and the Candy. Now this is a new addition to the road, really. It's only been around since 2008. And it was amazingly founded by two gentlemen, two London merchant bankers, who uh, found themselves unemployed. They, were, uh, they, were, they lost their jobs during the financial recession of 2008 and they both pooled their resources and they set up this tailoring house, Cad and the Candy, as a sort of passion piece. And it's gone from strength to strength. You know, they're doing rather well. Um, they initially started in conjunction with another much more famous tailoring house down the road called Chittleborough and Morgan, we will come to in a moment. But they now, I understand, employ something like 30 tailors. And uh, yeah, they're very much part of the establishment. Cad and the candy, there we go, we can see inside. Just have a look at some of the items in there. Beautiful, amazing stuff. And you can see lots of the work going on. I'll show you down in the basements. In this particular house, you can see that there's lots of shoe work going on downstairs. 
But as we go along to some of the other um, tailoring houses, we will actually show you some of the tailoring work going on downstairs as they go about their business. I'll just take the opportunity to pop across the street and show you Gaziano and Girling. Now, this is, I think, one of the only shoemakers on the road. Most of the shoemakers are in other parts of, of London. But Gaziano and Girling uh, is, again, a relatively new company, only around since 2006. Uh, and they've created their own bespoke shoe business. And they're going from strength to strength. I anticipate that Gaziano and Girling will be getting a royal warrant within the next couple of years. I'm sure they will. So, as we stroll along, Across the street, what can we see here? Let me, the light is all over the place at the moment. I hope it's coming across all right to you. So Dedge and Skinner. This is one of the older tailoring houses in the street. They date back to 1865. Um, still family owned, which is very much a rarity, really, uh, on this street. Their style uh, is very, very much of a military nature. Uh, and they hold the Royal Warrant for Her Majesty the Queen, the Sultan of Oman, and the King of Bahrain. And something like 50%, more than half of their customers are overseas. Now, as I say, if you look down into the basement, just off the main street, you can actually see the cutters and the tailors sewing, going about their work, creating these masterpieces, these amazing works of artistry, which the suits are here. Now, let me look at you for a moment, tell you a bit more about it. So Savile Row is most renowned for its style. The style is in a British format and predominantly the British style, the Savile Row style, is quite stark, quite austere, very uh, formal in its nature. Hence it's favoured by people who wear them for serious situations, so business, uh, weddings and things like that. Many royals get dressed from this street. It's a place where you know, members of the royal family come to acquire their, their kit. And particularly these older houses, you know, they've been around for a very long time, providing these clothing for people who really enjoy exceptional clothing. Uh, so there we go, that's Dedge and Skinner. I know what you're thinking. How much does a suit cost from Savile Row? Well, let me shed some light on it for you. Most of these shops have various different levels, obviously. You can go in and you can buy uh, a ready-to-wear garment. Off this street, that would cost you around about £700. If you go for a made-to-measure, so it's a little bit more personalization, it's going to be double that price. So around about £1,500. But full bespoke, and let's remember what full bespoke is. That's where you're going to have an item which is made specifically for you it will involve uh, a relationship with the tailor, the cutter, who will get to know you. There will be uh, several different fittings, up to four different fittings of the initial garment. They will cut uh, paper templates of the shape of your body. And this tailor that you work with, they will ask everything about you, where you intend to wear this suit, how you use it, what you're going to do with it. So they make sure that that garment will fit in a way which is unachievable in any other manner than buying it from here and having one of these elite tailors to create it for you. So the cost, a basic bespoke suit will cost about £4,000, but it can rise to as much as 10000 depending on your requirements and the materials needed. So let's move down, see what else is on the road. Okay, so next door, you might recognize this shop particularly if you enjoy the, uh, the Kingsman television programs, or movies rather, because yeah. Kingsman is where this was all based. Now this is Huntsman in effect, uh, and Huntsman is renowned as a tailor whose heritage is in outdoor wear. Um, I believe they began by creating leather riding breeches for the royal family, and it, as they've gone on, they definitely have an equestrian flav flavor still to this day. They're also renowned as being one of the most expensive tailors on the street. So, you know, there's no cheap deals to be had here. Um, they have, over time, clothed some of the most famous and stylish people in the world, including the likes of Gregory Peck, Winston Churchill, Clark Gable, and many, many more. Now, the, 
the director of the film Kingsman, Matthew Vaughan, is a customer of Huntsman. And when he was in the shop one day, getting fitted out for a latest suit of his, um, he had the inspiration to, to sort of cite the Kingsman story in the Huntsman shop. And if you look down, as I say, again, you can see the tailoring workshop below the store. So as we move along, looking at what's going on in the street, many very stylish gentlemen going about their work. Uh, here we come to Chittleborough and Morgan. Let me just poke it through the railings here. And you can actually see one of the tailors cutting there below in the working area. This is an artisan expert going about his business for anybody to see. Now, Chittleborough and Morgan is actually one of my favorite uh, styles of this row that we're on, this street. Um, obviously, created by two men, Mr. Chittleborough and Joe Morgan. Uh, Chittleborough is long retired, but Joe Morgan is still working in this location. Uh, he's been in the menswear world since he was 15 years of age, remarkably. Let me just step back a bit. Uh, he was made a master tailor by the Worshipful Company of Merchant Tailors in 2015. Um, so that's the sort of level that you have to be to achieve that certification of a master tailor. Uh, their styling is a little bit extreme. They have quite broad padded shoulders, which cinches into a rather slim waist, a long coat and rather wide lapels. And it's been described as many as being almost a superhero style because it gives the wearer this sort of superhero uh, silhouette and they are quite special quite stylish but they're also renowned for being some or creating some of the best work here on the road now next we come to Richard Anderson another one of the classics here Rich now Richard Anderson has been in business here since 2001 and uh, he trained next door at Huntsman you'll find that many of the elite tailors who work on this road jump from house to house acquiring better positions, head cutters, as they get promoted. So the style sort of cross-pollinates between the various different houses. And uh, it's known for a sharp military fashion to its cut of the garments here. They also have an in-house sort of reputation for denim and overcoats and things like that for the contemporary gentleman too. So it's not sort of dyed in the wool, just deep, you know, uh, very unrelenting fashion. There's lots, they do keep pace with the other things that go on. They're not um, unrealistic in their fashions. So as we pop along here, coming to the end of the really uh, impressive parts of Savile Row, here we see Henry Poole. Here we are outside Henry Poole's. Now Henry Poole has been around since 1806 and they're credited as being the first tailoring house to set up shop in Savile Row and they started this whole tradition of the best tailors being here on this street. Um, they're regarded, they're probably the greatest claim to fame in the men's sartorial world, is that they once tailored a short dinner jacket for the Prince of Wales of the day, uh, later to be known as King Edward VII, and latterly the Duke of Windsor, often regarded as one of the most stylish men in the world. Now that short dinner jacket was not really in keeping with the very formal styling of dinner clothing which was in fashion at the time. And the, the Prince of Wales, Duke of Windsor, uh, wore that jacket in the States to a place called the Tuxedo Club. And a lot of his friends loved the look and it became the required dinner wear from that point on. So that's where the dinner jacket started life and that's how it became known as the Tuxedo. And Henry Poole, to this day, uh, you know, holds royal warrants for practically every royal household in Europe and in its past, its previous clients, well, they're remarkable. Charles Dickens, Winston Churchill, President Ulysses S. Grant, Robert Mitchum, even Bram Stoker, the author who brought us the character Dracula, got his suits here. And again, let's walk up to the window. You can see some of the remarkable garments on display. But again, look down and the tailors are at work in their basement work areas. Absolutely fantastic. Now, we're just about coming to the end of our walking tour here. Now we are at Norton & Sons. Now Norton & Sons, interesting story with Norton & Sons. Just show you their basement, just down there. Norton & Sons was founded in 1821 by Walter Norton. And um, it went through sort of ups and downs in its, in its life.
but by the turn of the 21st century it was in real trouble they were making less than 200 bespoke suits a year now typically on the road um, one of the larger houses will make in excess of around about a thousand bespoke suits in any given year making under 200 it's not going to be able to break even so Norton was on the cusp of going bust and it was purchased by Scottish designer called Richard sorry Patrick Grant Patrick Grant will be well known to British viewers because he appears on a judge on the Great British Sewing Bee which is a, uh, a sewing competition which takes place in the UK televised and he totally revitalized this house and brought it back to life and I believe they make something to the region of 300 bespoke suits a year now uh, so it's very exclusive if you own a Norton and Sons suit you will be in the minority of well-dressed men they also have a bespoke shirt service which is one of the very few which does that on the street here in Savile Row and I think I'm gonna leave it there uh, because you know that is Savile Row and of course as I say many many more shops and things going on here Oswald Botang over there lots of uh, Richard James just on the other side of the street lots of these tailoring houses came into the row and really saved it from becoming just another retail street but I hope you've enjoyed this bit of a walking tour around Savile Row today um, it just gives you an insight really of what it's like in perhaps the epicenter of the world's tailoring capital uh, and you get to see the tailors doing their work if you ever get the chance and you come to London please walk up and down this street please look down look down into those basement workshops and you will see these remarkable men and women who create these works of art these bespoke suits which are beyond our reach way beyond our reach for most of us watching this but it's something to know that the standards are still there when you win that lottery you can come here and get you know the finest clothing in the world cut to your exact specifications and you will cut a dash like no other so I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have of course don't forget give it a thumbs up click the red button if you'd like to support the channel you can buy me a coffee and the link for that is in the show notes below but until the next time take care of yourselves and I will see you again very soon